nobody turned the mic on. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. All right, I think you can hear me now. All right. Are we good? I started talking there and the mic wasn't even on. All right. Yeah, they say you are Richard the Crane and Chef. Um, Kitla Chini, Bushes Ching, Goggin and Sle. Um, I see this is a Goggin and this is not like a day at the name and Sle. Um, I auto I guess yet. Um, Leah, say yada Nasha. Uh, good day at the name and Sle. Hello, everybody. Can you hear me okay? All right. Good. Just had a uh, forgot to press the uh, I got forgot to turn my mic on. There's a little switch right here. <laughs> Anyway, always some technical difficulties going on. Um, so yeah, so we're going to continue our, our talk, our little conversation of uh, what we talked about last week. Uh, last week we talked about the gifting of eagle feathers, and um, right about in this time is about graduation season when um, you know we we're gifting a lot of our a lot of uh, uh, young people um, are getting are graduating from you know whatever, from, from high school. Uh, from middle school, um, college, you know, getting their um, <clears throat> masters or uh, PhDs, doctoral degrees, um, and also you know technical colleges and 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 all the different you know graduation ceremonies that take place and, and during those times you know there's gifting of of eagle feathers you know it's uh, kind of a, a rite of passage uh, uh, moving on to the next to the journey you know um, for a lot of us. Um, I don't think I I, I touched about you know, last last week. I didn't touch. Um, I I talked about it a little bit, but um, um, in high school, uh, for me myself, you know, my personal story. Um, okay, it's getting too high now. Now I can't look. It's right in my face now. Um, but that was were fine. It's not. You can barely hear me. They said they can barely hear me. Can you guys hear me okay? Who's out there? I don't know. I missed Carolina. Is Carolina there? Melissa? Someone? Thomas? Can you hear me? <laughs> All right. I guess I'll just move close to this mic and get real close. Um, anyway, I lost my train of thought there. Can somebody help me? <laughs> Yeah, we're talking about eagle feathers and gifting of eagle feathers, and the importance of that, you know, because um, that's like one of the first steps. You know, I truly believe that's one of the first steps um, receiving the, an eagle feather is um, uh, of the, of uh, of continuing on, find continue on, continuing. Can't even talk. Continuing one's journey. Um, you know, it kind of marks. Uh, a time when you know, you accomplish, you know, of course you accomplish something, but of course it means that uh, it's a time when um, you can start taking care of yourself. And you know, one of those things that we gift you eagle feather for is for continue con the continuation of 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 self care. You know, for yourself. You know, we give that eagle feather to the to the individual, the person. Um, to take care of themselves, to smudge themselves, to be able to cleanse themselves, to to be able to connect to connect to the Creator, and you know, take care of oneself. You know, like I said uh, many times before, um, as Native people, we believe in uh, mind, body, and soul, and taking care of ourselves, not only you know inside and outside, you know, in our community and the earth that we stand on, and things that we do. You know, we have self care and taking taking care of our ourselves. You know, our, our our traditional beliefs, our values, and, and all that, you know, comes together. And, you know, that's one of the first steps that I, I believe, you know. Um, I know a lot of people do believe that, too. That's why they give give the gifts of the feathers for self-care, to take care of one oneself individually, um, to be a blessing. And it's also, you know, really a true blessing to be able to receive one, you know. Uh, great, great, great accomplishments, you know, are happening, you know. For me, um, you know, I grew up on the uh, Navajo Reservation, uh, for me, my, my little story, I think I kind of told it last week, you know, when I, when I grew when I graduated from high school, you know, I didn't get an Eagle Feather. Um, I think, um, the story behind that, you know, is I, I wasn't really, uh, I was, uh, 
C to B student. You know, I wasn't, I didn't get straight A's. You know, I wasn't valedictorian or nothing like that. You know, uh, I just passed, you know, with a C, um, with a B, you know, which was, for me, you know, it was a great accomplishment, you know. I think uh, I began my high school career um, um, having to, you know, be put in special ed, you know, for my um, uh, my speech, my talk, because, you know, I grew up speaking my um, the Dene language, you know, I, I stopped speaking English a lot and I started, um, because I lived with my grandparents, you know, they taught me that that language, the, the Dene language, and, you know, that's the language that I learned um, the most. And so it, uh, some people thought, I, you know, I was behind, so I was put into special ed. So I'd take all these courses, extra courses to get into, you know, to get better grades, um, to keep up with the other kids, individuals. And so I didn't do, um, as well as I wanted to, but, you know, I was also, also like an athlete. I wanted to play sports. So I, I actually kept up my grades because I wanted to play sports. Um, cause it, you know, it kind of, it was a getaway for me. It was a way that I could, um, get away from things that were happening at home. You know, it was kind of an escape. Uh, but at the same time, you know, I, I had to keep up my grades. I had to at least keep a C better. And so I, I did that, you know, eventually, you know, I got, got to a point in my life, you know, um, my education was, was also, was important and, and I wanted to go to college, but you know, there was no funding for me. There was no things like that. And, and so I eventually decided just to go to college. Um, but anyway, that's a whole nother story, but yeah. So, um, during my graduation ceremony, I never received an Eagle feather. You know, a lot of, a lot of kids these days are be able to receive Eagle feathers during that time. You know, I never was able to, it wasn't until, um, until after I got out of the military, I think after I went to Desert Storm um, during the, that war, war period, and I came back home, you know, my family was very happy to see me. It was at a, another celebration, my, and my grandfolks were happy to see me. They were happy to that I was back, you know, from war. And so at that point, you know, my grandparents, you know, gifted me my, my eagle feather, my eagle wing. Um, and so that was the, the moment that, you know, um, I was truly blessed, you know, I felt like some sort of accomplishment. Um, so that's kind of my talk for today is, um, um, you know, respect um, and getting the rights and also having the responsibility and also, you know, you know, native resilience, resiliency. Um, like I said, you know, um, I know there's uh, during these times, uh, in May, uh, graduation times, a lot of kids get their feathers. And like I said, for me, you know, a lot of, and, and for a lot of other individual kids, you know, uh, native kids <clears throat> that don't get their eagle feather until they get older, you know, um, there's nothing wrong with it. You know, it, it happens when it happens, you know, when creator happens or, you know, when individuals, you know, take that upon themselves. And usually, you know, it's up to the parents or the grandparents. And for me, you know, it was my grandparents after I came back from the war that was being, I was able to get that, you know, the gift of the feather and, and you know, I wasn't just given, given it to me. You know, I, I knew the, my grandfather, um, told me what the, what this wing was for, where it came from, you know, what I, you know, the chose, the path that I chose, you know, was the, the warrior path. And, you know, I had a real many different, um, responsibilities or some people call them rights, you know, and the crow people, we call them rights. Um, and so one of those rights was to be able to take care of that eagle wing. You know, I got a whole wing and I'm, I, I think I told the story before how I, how that wing, uh, came into the family, you know, my, my grandfather, um, back in the day, you know, when we were, I was a kid, you know, we, um, there was an accident, you know, he had been, um, trying to put, put out a trap for the coyote and the coyote came down to our coyote was, um, we set a trap for the coyote. Um, he got these from the, the chapter house meeting and there's a, I guess the, at that time, you know, we had a lot of livestock and other, other people around the area had a lot of livestock and so were, they were having a, uh, coyote problem and so you know my, my grandfather was at that time he was uh one of the people that uh took care of of the um i forgot what they call it um not a tribal he was like um i can't remember what it was but he took care of like the animal things you know he was kind of the the one that took care of the animals i can't think of it the the, the name or terminology right now when it came he was part of the chapter house um division and 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 so he was able to, um, he was one that was, um, 
one of the people that had to take care of the coyote problem because you know people's livestock were eating but anyway um so that story goes you know that um my grandfather got you know these traps from the the that the the navajo uh, department had um given issued them i guess and gave it to him and so he never used a trap trap before and so he did this one time and he put it out there and you know and and set it and put meat out there and then but then you know unfortunately you know the eagle a golden eagle came down and came out in that trap and got caught in it and so you know that was an accident uh but at the same time you know it became a blessing later on in, in my years and in, in my in, as i got older you know for the military and so and i was there to witness you know that trapping of that eagle that eagle and that that coyote trap and from then on i know my grandfather never used one of those traps ever and ever again because you know it that that what happened you know that was a sacred animal that you know he'd accidentally <clears throat> um trapped and you know that you know sometimes that happens and and so anyway so that story comes from that and that and that's where i got that that eagle wing you know i remember that story and then he told me that you know in life there's a lot of things that you have accomplishments and goals and things that you you set forth and and then you always always told you know you can either you know follow you know you'd have half you have to have you know some sort of a religion or relig kind of a religion but um some way of praying to the creator you know whether it's um through the native american church or through uh the powwow way or in, um the powwow way where we you know dance song and dance is done uh, which is comes from my, my my people the crow people and so he you know told me that at that time to that i had to choose you know a path you know that i wanted to follow and be a part of and so um i chose that um to learn more about my crow crow history crow, crow people and crow chose the path of the powwow the dancing and the singing and and all that um i guess they could also say it's the the warrior warrior kind of path um and so you know from there you know i was able to he, was, he gave me a lot of the rights to be able to hold on to these feathers and and from then you know that's what you know when i talk about rights and responsibilities that's what it is the rights to carry eagle feathers you know as a veteran um even on the crow side you know our veterans are the ones that are responsible for the eagle feathers and taking care of them and, and giving them out and bringing the the young kids into the the dance societies um the dance floor the dance arena um whatever you call it, um because you know the teaching that we got uh, from the powwow way of, of life was you know the powwow itself was um for us you know was a celebration of the warriors returning home and and taking care of warriors and so the warriors had a lot of rights and responsibilities to bring other dancers that you know or gift you know feathers to the young people or the the people that did great deeds or accomplishments and that was my um became my responsibility and still is you know my responsibility as long um i you know take that on as as, as as best as I can, you know, as elders, you know, um, elders also have that responsibility or that right. And, you know, also, you know, doing paint, you know, I was able to put paint on myself or for myself. You know, I was given what's called chi um, in Navajo. It's just the red maroon paint that was put on my face, you know. Um, and usually, you know, they'll paint the, the warriors during that time. I know I've seen um, people have done, get that right and that warrior and then, you know, other things that, I, I was part of, you know, as far as um, getting rights and responsibilities. And so, you know, at that moment, you know, you know, it came, it became, you know, more endearing to my heart to take care of things like that. And so from then on, you know, I think I started getting, um, you know, without me asking, you know, just Eagle Feather started coming to me. I remember um, when I um, came back to um, San Diego, um, um, one time I went up, actually went up to LA and I went to this, this dance and I thought it was a powwow, but it was uh, a gourd dance. And, um, they, I guess there, there's a time when they, the head gourd dancer, you know, called out to people and asked for if there was any, any, any veterans or any active military. And I was still active then. So I went, went up and I wasn't expecting anything. And I was given this feather. Um, and, and to this day, I still dance with this feather. And this was back a long back when I was like 20, 22, something like that. And, um, 22 years old, 20, 21, maybe actually tw my 20s. It was it was a while back. I can't remember exactly the date, but um, during that time, I know the head court dancer gift gifted me this feather, and it was eagle feather. It was white, uh, black and white one. It was it was beautiful. I never had a uh, black and white one. And the black and white one um, feathers they come from uh, usually up north. You know, I've only seen those black and white feathers up north. Um, I always seen, you know, bald eagle feathers and, and things like that. But also, you know, down south, you know, we have the golden feather and 
and golden eagle feather and usually that's what i would see um but uh, which is a little different but um i don't know the I don't know exactly the differences between all the different eagles and the raptors, but um, I know that that much, you know, um, since then, you know, I've been, you know, been able to do certain things, you know, I was explained and taught things about the eagle and, you know, even just taking apart when we um, take apart the eagle feathers and put them back together, you know, from my uncles. Um, I was also taught a lot of things like that, that I saw that they did uh, my grandparents and my grandma they took care of eagle feathers and feathers and, and a lot of medicines and i was able to see that and witness that so i have a lot of uh, first-hand knowledge about that and you know just thinking about that and and you know i was thinking about um also you know um in this talk today about um respect you know i know um i was always taught you know the respect you have to earn respect you know or, you know, usually for me, you know, I always, you know, give people respect um, until until they lose that respect somehow, you know, something they do or something they, you know, accidentally do. Because I can, I could, you know, for myself, I still try not to judge people that way. Because, um, you know, anything that you do, you know, I could do, say something here live and, and you know, completely, you know, lose respect of some people and yet, you know, be okay with other people. Um, so, you know, it's always... A teaching for me you know that i that i was that i've always you know been told that even using the words the words that come out your mouth you have to be uh, mindful of it of uh, respectful and you know because they can hurt people and hurt in that way <clears throat> and, and, and in that way you can also you know people can lose respect for you or and things that like that in that nature but as, as human beings you know that's you know that's our kind of default you know um and i think um when I think of respect, I think more of the um, the things that are um, what do they call them? Um, things like uh, you know water. You have to respect water because you know it can take your life. You know if you go and take too much into your body, even though at the same time it's uh, it, it's a life giver. You need water to survive, to live. You know, but if you you can drown in it too, so you have to have respect for that water. Uh, even going out into nature, you know, these natural natural laws, I think that's what they call it. Um, a lot of folks, you know, call talk about the natural laws to have respect for them, you know. Um, you know, just like fire, you can't, you know, play with fire. Fire can really burn you and hurt you. But at the same time, you know, when it burns some of these, um, here in uh, Southern California, they used to be able to burn these areas. They have burn, burn gardens and stuff and we even did that back home when we did gardening we would burn the fields and then prepare preparing for the next crop you know that would re replenish um through fire replenish the ground re re replenish you know the the soil itself you know that was a form of of taking care of the earth and rebirth you know there's a lot of uh, plants that need that fire or that heat to have um be able to pollinate uh, not pollinate but uh, to be able to pop that seed and you know be able to spread that seed around you know a lot of plants are like that and so you know fire is the same way you know a lot there's a law about it you have to respect it um <clears throat> and at the same time you know it can be dangerous and deadly so you know that's the reason you have to respect it and so you know things like air if you don't have air you know you have to respect that and so that's kind of a, a respect that i always think when I, I think about um respect what does it mean you know the things that you have to respect and you know as i as i gotten older um and uh, I guess kind of wiser, hey, um, thinking about what else is respectful. Um, sometimes, you know, um, when I think or when I talk, you know, um, my mind tends to talk you know, or think in like kind of the ne in, in the ne way, and kind of you know it kind of slows me down. It slows me down was you know what people think, or I, I kind of you know stop and and think about what I'm going to say you know, because I, I always think in in the ne or Navajo first, and then I think in English, and then. Then I have to, you know, translate into that into English, <laughs> and sometimes, you know, it. Uh, I sit and I have to think about what I'm going to say before I say it, you know, so it comes out right. And even, you know, saying words in English is still, um, I have trouble with it. But at the same time, you know, I still can speak English pretty good. I'm, uh, you know, high or high school, um, college from. I went to school. <laughs> I went to. Well, <laughs> went to. <laughs> uh, went to college, but you know, I didn't major in English. <laughs> um, but uh, anyway, I digress from that. Um, 
so you know respecting you know those natural things the natural laws is very important and you know as in human beings we can easily lose or 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 or, or you know not understand it and then somehow um lose that respect you know for me you know growing up as a young kid you know i always tried to to earn the respect of my my stepdad you know by playing all the sports that he played and and doing as as good you know and for a long time you know i uh, always felt down because you know i couldn't earn his respect you know but but he had his own issues and you know um and i didn't know that at the time and but but for me you know i wanted to for him to you know love me and 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 respect me for the things that i do but it wasn't until you know i graduated boot camp that he you know really felt um proud of me and i felt you know that he felt proud of me and and and, and it wasn't that until that time you know i felt good but at that time you know at a boot camp you know i was just happy to see my 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 family my folks my my, my stepdad at that time you know he had changed a lot you know he you know stopped doing drug drugs and alcohol and stuff and he became a changed man and, and you know um but at the same time um yeah so you know trying to gain someone's respect is really hard and can be um negative for you uh as far as self-care is important you know it's always important to to take care of yourself you know find respect in the fact that you know the people that appreciate you and also you know find respect in yourself you know take care of yourself um take care of your body you know keep yourself in shape you know drink water um as a form of respect you know you know take care of your, your face you know put lotion on you know for me um even going out in the sun you also have to you know respect yourself respect your body by you know nowadays we have to put sunscreen on our face you know i i do that now nowadays but as a kid i didn't do that you know i think i have a lot of um had a, a lot of problems with my face and issues and, and things like that because i didn't respect it enough you know i guess i didn't put lotion on and, and didn't put uh, sunblock or windblock and and then even like having dry skin on your your legs your ankles you know have respect for that you know put some lotion on yourself you know and that can also be helped you know by the foods that you eat the foods that you you know you know the water that you drink you know if you're drinking too much soda or too much things um juices that are bad for you and you, you disrespect yourself by and you can ruin yourself you can ruin your kidneys you know that's why we always say you know even uh my dad my real dad you know was kind of a a point you know he drank alcohol until and alcohol is bad for you, you know, for your body, and and it's proof that in, inside his body, you know, his kidneys and his whole in, interior, you know, went bad. And when he stopped drinking, um, it didn't work for him. He needed that to keep on living because his body was used to it, and and so you know his body shut down. And so you know, thinking about the that things to respect yourself by, you know, taking care of yourself, you know, brushing your hair. Um, I know having long hair, um, you have to take care of your own hair it's up to you you know um i usually you know have to braid my own hair in the morning you know sometimes i'll get my my kids to you know braid my hair um even washing it you know using conditioner hey um and even you know you tried to teach that to our, our young kids our, our my son you know um, um a while back we were doing a, a little interview and you know i was trying he was trying to explain something to me but at the same time i, I couldn't process it i couldn't get it you know um I had to take, you know, it took me like almost five minutes to get it. And he kept explaining to me the way he explained it was different. And for me, you know, uh, as older, as, as an older guy, you know, there's things that take me a little bit more time to process and then to get it and then to say it. And then there's a whole thing. I don't know. I don't know if anybody has that problem. Um, but anyway, at that time, you know, I, I told him that he needs to kind of give me a little a time you know give me a little, a little respect so i can process and then I'll, I'll hopefully catch on to what he's talking about and and be on the same page and so eventually you know i got what he meant and then he explained and, and we took the time to explain it to each other and so you know that that time you know even though you know he wasn't in his mind he wasn't being dis disrespectful but at the same time he wanted to get something done you know um at the same time you know i, I was like just trying to tell them that I needed a little bit of time. So sometimes you have to give people time to 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 do things and and process and and and, and, and eventually, you know, like I said, even for me, you know, not being able to receive the eagle feather when I was uh, out of high school, you know, it took 
time and uh, maybe it was me maybe it was uh the situation maybe it was the person that you know didn't have the feathers or maybe they did maybe i didn't earn the right yet but it wasn't until after i got back from the military that i received that and then I, I felt you know much better you know i felt whole and I, I kind of felt like a purpose and i was given you know these things and that's i think at that point i really made another decision in my life to you know really learn um, my traditional ways really go back and think about you know things that were taught to me the experiences that i learned or that that i i i was able to be a part of all the ceremonies and think about it and you know process it so that I, I can you know share with the people share with the individual you know so that's my you know kind of experience you know everybody has their own experience um when when they first receive that eagle feather or if they ever got one you know maybe one day you'll you will get one or maybe what you have one there's all everybody has their own little story um and so, but you know, it takes um, there's a process that that hap that has to happen, and there's people and individuals, you know, people that um, have that rights to be able to gift a, a feather or do have that rights to ha hold on or take care of that feather. And so, you know, parents, you know, sometimes as us as parents and or living in the urban area, we don't um, sometimes we find that we don't have people or folks that we can connect to. Um, and ask, you know, and sometimes it feels weird to to ask for eagle feathers, even though you know you're you're native, and for some reason, you know, you should have one, as that's the kind of way of people kind of think. But at the same time, you know, um, we always have to think about our traditional ways. Sometimes that's not the way we we were taught, or that that's not the way traditional ways things were there was always people in 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 places in that that held those responsibilities that you know had the rights to hold eagle feathers that were had the rights to give give them and gift them so it's up to the, the families or the individual person that wants to gift or you know give that person when they have that accomplishment you know to find out those people that have those rights to have find out who those people to that have those eagle feathers to be able to you know um, do that process you know there's a process like i said in all the things that we do uh, as native people um you can't just go ask someone you can but at the same time you know you have to gift that person you know um like for the crow side you know usually we, we do four 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 items for gifts to that person that we ask you know of of them or you know we bring tobacco or some sort of medicine to them and also you know the reason why we want it and you know maybe some food and also you know material type things um and so there's always a, a process that, that that's good to always you know not just ask for things but also you know give give and gift and you know reciprocal situation or reciprocal all of our i think all of our native doings are reciprocal where we give give and take um and so, you know, there's always always a balance in, in things that we do. And so, you know, I wanted to um, just let people know that, you know, if you didn't receive eagle feather right then, you know, maybe there's a time and a place that you will. Um, maybe, you know, as parents, you, you need to um, find that person that can be able to do that. I know this past weekend, um, a lot of, I saw that um, the SCTCA or uh, Tribal of um, had their graduation ceremony um, up in Pala, and 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 usually what happens, um, um, the tribal, local tribal people would get together, um, tribal members or tribal um, um, chairmen, and and the 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 councils of the different tribes um, come together, and they bring each of them bring feathers, and they bring them together, and they you know all contribute uh, to the table that's the gifting table of, of to the students that come up and. And that happens, I believe, every year here in in in, in San Diego. I know um, we're gonna have um, a little one here at the youth center. I know. Um, I think Larry and you know uh, had talked about a while back and put out an email about you know we're, we're looking for graduates to be able to honor them. I don't not actually. I'm not saying that we're giving giving eagle feathers, but we actually want to you know honor our, our graduates that have graduated. So you can put in. Um, I'm not sure exactly. You know, maybe Melissa or. Or whoever is listening can um, put in the comments what uh, what what exactly what's going to happen or where they sign up. Um, I don't have that flyer with me. I know we're. No, I don't even know if the deadline is already passed. But um, I just wanted to put that out there also that we're having a little bit of a, a graduation ceremony. Um, I believe we might be doing it Zoom or live. You know, I should have read the email <laughs> as I usually do sometimes. <laughs> 
Um, but, um, but yeah, so there's a whole process that happens, you know, finding the individual to be able to give that, that gift of the feather and then having those and, you know, people have, like I said, their rights, you know, the responsibility to take care of them. And then, and that all that, you know, comes together, um, as Indian people, you know, um, as those young kids, you know, the high school kids got their ego feather, you know, I'm sure, um, some of their elders, you know, told them the reason why they got that, you know, was because of their accomplishment. Yes, of course. But also it's a, it's a rite of passage, um, a way that, that you're moving on as becoming an adult or more responsible, that you're responsible for yourself, for your health, for your well being, for your for your own good goodness and with that ego feather you can be able to, you know, cleanse yourself, cleanse your soul and you know, connect um make that connection or uh, petition creator when you need to, you know, when you need strength, when you need um prayers and stuff like that. And, you know, that's the purpose of the ego feather, you know, self care, you know, first step is receiving that and using that and learning how to do it and, and, and if you don't, if you get a ego feather, you know, ask uh, what do I do with this, you know? Um, and, you know, I'm sure there's people in your own tribe or in, 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 if you ever see me, you know, I can always at, show you, I know I get a lot of kids, you know, coming to college, to the colleges and sometimes, uh, they're, they're not, um, they don't know what to do, um, as far as smudging or even how to use it. And so, you know, I take, usually take the time, you know, it's not, not their fault you know it's never your fault it's always you know up to us i believe it's up to us as el as elders or as you know as as people in those um with those rights and responsibilities to let the people know how to use it let them let them know cuz you know um we live apart as indian people we live kind of scattered lives but we also live um um far away from each other and at times it's hard for us to connect and and make that connection um, sometimes even on the reservation, it's the same way, you know, um, on Navajo reservation, we are all spread out too. You know, we don't, aren't, we don't live too close together, but at the same time, you know, you, it's, um, up to the individual or, you know, the parents or the guardians to take that step and find those people and put things together. If you want to give an ego feather, um, <clears throat> but yeah, so that's, you know, like I said, is a, Ego, getting one is a rite of passage for you uh, as a young person or as a person you know you come to that point where you start taking care of yourself and you you start taking not only of yourself you know is, is important but also you know giving back to the community as another thing you know that's you know i've always been taught that you know once you, you receive those good gifts you know you should always give back somehow some way and you know i'm um, be appreciative and so and every day you know i try to do the same thing for for my own kids you know i teach them you know i had to teach them how to smudge and you know even using you know like a lighter you know what type of smudge to use or what different medicines are for you know around here they use the the coastal sage you know i have some of that and i also have this um around here just they have abalone shells accessible um, I've only seen these when I was growing up, you know, I only saw these once in a while. My grandparents would break an abalone shell and I always wonder what it was or what it was for. And they would have their medicines in it and they would use it and it would burn. And they also, you know, they'd have little rolls of, of cedar. And so, you know, there's a whole process in, of teaching the young folks, the young in, individuals to take care of themselves, to self care, um, take care, or like I said, mind, body, and soul <clears throat> and have respect. And, you know, that's the way, you know, I think of those, those four, Four things or three things, um, um, you know, ha having uh, the right to do something and getting the, res um, the responsibility of taking care of it. And then, um, and and, um, and you know, the last thing um, kind of want to end my talk on is about native resilience. You know, if we do all these things, um, and you know, we do, we do the processes and keep continuing. Like I said, this information is for, for the people to share, you know, it, um, I was thinking about, um, something last week about how, um, we used to have, um, um, societies, you know, dance societies. We have a, a little bit of a dance society here called the Soaring Eagles and also, you know, the star dance group and the Indian dance group, you know, has become a society. And we also have the Tonkawa elders. Um, it's a, it's, a, it's a society also that, that elders can come together and, and talk and discuss and do things like that. And, you know, I remember, um, I was thinking about 
last week about the different societies that we used to have in in the dance societies they have the grass dance society you know or they have um they have the traditional society they have the women's different women's society you know i know a few societies that my uh, my grandparents were part of my aunts and uncles you know back home in the crow country you know we have our our different societies not only the dance one but also you know taking care of of the different things um and there's like the otter society that we also had you know i know um my aunt is part of that you know no no no, don't know too much but i know there's a society in that and taking care of the different things and having um in those societies there's different responsibilities and there's different teachings that were long time ago that were learned and that were taught to to people that were part of them and so it was a way of uh they would uh, teach self-care, basically, and teach ways of taking care of things, you know, getting, um, respecting things, you know, the the natural law of things. And, and they would teach that and they would, you know, teach about um, respecting all those, those, those natural laws and, you know, what things, you know, respect, like plants and stuff, you know, and taking care of them and respect them and, 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 and taking care of your environment, you know. Um, in the societies that were taught, you know, when you take things like uh, medicines from from the environment, you always give back, you know, give give gift or ask prayer or ask creator and and do things that that give back to those plants, those plants. And we always thought of them, those as plant societies or you know the animal societies, the horse societies, you know, the different levels of um, of creatures, because all these animals and these creatures that that were actually you know from our many of of our creation stories they were here f- first before us you know um and in my language the Nini language we talk about you know there are che or our, our grandmas our grandpas when we talk th- about some of these animals you know like the bear um we we we, we call them that's our, our grandpa and saying that you know we we show respect in saying that they you know we we know that they were there first before us and they taught us things you know all these animals and um taught us many different things uh, as we became people you know um creator created us yes um with his with his breath and but at the same time other the animals were part of that also and they taught us um and i know and i know in some of our stories and many of our, our teachings you know even our creation stories it talks about how the animals helped us and create this this world this land and taught us many different things you know and so we always have to have respect for the for them in in that way um and at the same time you know they taught us how to to take care of ourselves, to help us to wash, you know. If you ever seen a um a raccoon, they'll be washed and well they'll wash your hands <laughs> and they'll also wash your food before they eat it. Um we were um been able to witness that that's what they do and that's something that we witnessed and we saw and, and they did it do for a reason because they don't want to get sick, they want to take care of themselves. And so be like you know, be like them and take care of yourself and clean cleanse your food first and clean it and make it a good take. And then and even like the animals would would know how to find that that water that was drinkable um <clears throat> and so you know there's a lot of things that those animals have taught us and, and i just you know i was just thinking about that and in in those societies that we had those those different societies they would teach these teachings and you know you would be given the responsibility of passing that on to the newest person that comes into that society you know whether you know even you know thinking about the coming of age um when our young people, you know, our girls and our boys come, there's ceremonies called, you know, that are um, coming of age um, and they have um, different little ceremonies or, or dances that are done and 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 there's things that are taught and, 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 and passed on and, and, and saying that, you know. Um, so a lot of our information, you know, is always um, retold, you could say, or just so, you know, the people... Not that they they would forget, but also to remind them. Uh, many times, you know, I remember my grandparents, you know, telling me things like not to whistle at night, or um, not to do certain things, um, you know, during the eclipse, um, or you know, not to cut your hair at night and do things like that that I didn't understand. Um, but at the same time, and and also, you know, um, being around, you know. Uh, those mothers or, or those individuals that are pregnant, you know, not to, you know, say bad things or, 
or, or do bad things around them because those young young kids that are still in the womb will hear you or you know they'll they'll they'll, they'll be upset by you and so you know there's teachings like that you know that that have been passed on but it's up up to us as individuals you know um during those times like i said those rites of passage um we do teachings but it should be done almost um i almost think it should be done daily so we can be reminded um, each and every day to be, to be able to take care of ourselves, to respect ourselves, to to take care of oneself. You know, self care happen should happen every day, every every time you can. Uh, not just, don't just wait. You know, once in a while, once a year when you go back to that ceremony to do that. Um, it's most important to take care of yourself. Um, and also, you know, remind if you have those those rights or responsibilities to remind the the individual or the people that that you taught. Um, even like. Um, I said when 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 we have those coming of age um ceremonies you know there's a lot of teaching that happens and that are told to the young people but it's good to remind them you know to do things um that were taught that day you know every day uh to to maybe get up early in the morning greet the day and you know go for a jog and there's a time as is, us as indian people we would wake up really early when right when the sun woke up and we would do exercise you know Navajo people we would go out and exercise every day greeting the the morning day and that was a form of self-care taking care of ourselves. and there was a time that we could you know run long distance and walk um millions of millions of miles a uh, walk just all over and um but nowadays you know we, we seem to be suffering from diabetes and, and and different things um because we don't do we don't practice our ceremonies we because we don't go out and i'm not talking about um like major ceremonies talking about ceremonies of the individual person you know going out and doing self-care and taking care of yourself and you know breathing that fresh air and you know that's a ceremony in itself and burning sage for yourself and cleaning yourself that's a ceremony in itself and we need to remind ourselves to do that and also you know remind the, the young kids the young folks you know that's um what i i want to to get out of this talk or this discussion today is also you know the elders you know have a you have a responsibility, you know, the people that have the rights and responsibilities also have that responsibility to remind those young people, to remind those folks, you know, to take care of themselves, to cleanse themselves. Um, and if we all remind one another and that way we take care of our ourselves, our community, and in that way, you know, we will be healthy once again and we will to come together like right now, you know, washing our hands, you know, and uh, wearing our mask. And it's still, even though the CDC put out that you know it's okay that we can stop wearing a mask but at the same time we want to still take care of ourselves and those individuals that still have not got got their vaccination um i know my son next week will be able to get his vaccination um his first one um or next week uh i know a lot of other kids have already got their vaccination 12 and over um and so um but i was saying i think last week about you know i wasn't able to go out or talk to too many people because you know i was still because uh, i worried about my kids you know i don't want them to get you know for me to go out and you know catch something and bring it back to them you know um i didn't want that to happen because they they were they even though you know the adults got the vaccination the kids were still um didn't have theirs and you know i had a real problem there but now you know that they're be able to other kids are being able to do that you know I, I feel a lot better for my family but there's still there's kids that are under 12 you know you should have respect for them and you know um and and i don't know keep your distance and keep washing your hand maybe wear your mask around them even though you know cdc said it's okay you know it's still up to the individual to make that choice um to take care of ourselves as indian people like i say that because um us indian people are, are smaller in number um, our elders are smaller in number, you know, are, and so we need to be mindful and to take care of ourselves a lot more than the general public, you know, because um, there's a lot of uh, other not native people more than us, and but us are, you know, we're smaller in number, so we need to 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 be more um, vigilant and to take care of our own ourselves so that we can continue that resiliency of uh, of our people and. And those, so in you know this talk was just about that you know the continuation you know of our, our self care, um, continuation of our teachings and and earnings earnings of those rights and responsibilities and then to 
to you know to continue our resiliency that we've 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 been a part of we've been of that we've we've that all of us have been a part of if you haven't known if you don't know this you know as native people we were almost you know extinguished or terminated um, but we're still here with our resiliency you know there's many been many um um, pandemics in our lives and we've survived them all and we're still here and we're still sh with our resiliency we're still you know striving on and i wanted to end with that you know and continue you know you, you should always continue your teachings you know as, as an individual person you know if you like some of the things that i said you know use it you could this is for you know, you guys as, as a people as as a, as, a, as, a, as a tribal people as, as an individual as a person to take care of yourself um so you know with that i wanted to end and have a good day you guys have a good night good evening whenever you guys tune into this uh like i said we're looking for graduates to to honor um and then we also have a, a few things that are happening soon i know um in next month is it uh next month june um we're having our, our gona it's official we're having our gona which is gona it's the gathering of native americans um it's a time when we um are able to come together as a community and do some uh, community healing um and so it's going to be a good time i can't wait for that so we'll, we're going to be preparing for that and it's going to be um we'll start uh, announcing dates and times but i know it's official that we're going to be doing it uh, i know um if you're tuning in from other other places there are other um other um indian health or um places that are having their own gona i know fresno la um uh, probably in the bay area are having theirs and there are other many other places that are having theirs uh but anyway you guys um stay tuned for that um you guys have a good evening uh, a good night whatever time of day it is for you you guys uh stay blessed you know a whole peace and uh prosperity hey do the, the thing just kidding <laughs> uh yeah so smudge don't judge we'll talk to you guys later